Once again, good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank all of you for joining tonight's webinar on using technology to navigate the daunting change that we're all going to be facing. That change, of course, is the transition of ICD-9 to ICD-10. My name is John Juliana, and I'm very pleased to bring you this webinar tonight. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping rules. Everyone tonight is in a listen-only mode. We do encourage questions, however, simply by typing them into the GoToMeeting question box located on the right-hand side of your screen. Now, we have a lot of attendees registered tonight, so it's really not going to be too practical for me to answer each and every question, of course, but what I will promise is the fact that I will copy and answer all the questions, and we'll have a frequently asked questions document that will be posted on the Trizetto website. We'll let you know exactly where that's going to be um, after the series of these webinars take place. We'll notify, reach out to all of you to let you know exactly um, how to get that FAQ document. Tonight's webinar is also going to be recorded. We'll also let you know exactly how to go and watch the webinar once again at your own leisure, or if people missed it within your office, they can certainly access it again. We'll let you know exactly how to do that. Before we begin, I just want to share with you a little bit about myself and the perspective that I'm actually going to deliver this webinar. By trade, I'm actually a podiatric physician, a podiatrist. But I also have a master's in healthcare management, and, and throughout the years, that's allowed me the privilege of engaging with practices both big and small as a healthcare consultant. So tonight I'm actually going to provide you with some insight about this very daunting change that we're going to be facing actually through the eyes of both the provider as well as a healthcare consultant. Tonight you're going to see the difference between ICD-10 readiness, ICD-10 tools, and a true ICD-10 solution, that of course being the Smartsheet 10 technology. And you'll hear me focus a few times tonight on the difference between tools and solutions. It's really only the solutions that are going to enable you to overcome what I consider to be the two distinct highest hurdles associated with the ICD-10 transition. That's going to be, of course, code specificity, being able to get the precise code to get that claim paid for you, as well as figuring out a way that will not allow ICD-10 to compromise your current workflow, much like Meaningful Use and PQRS has somewhat compromised our workflow. We have to figure out a way to mitigate that during this transition. Those are the two hurdles, code specificity and workflow, and you will see how a true solution mitigates both of those hurdles. Also at the conclusion of tonight's webinar, I'm going to tell you about a free trial of Smartsheet and how you could obtain that free, smart, that free trial by going to the Trizetto website again, and uh, we want you to enjoy that free trial, um, so please don't miss out on that opportunity. Again, tonight's webinar is going to be recorded, and I'd like to start by just going over some basics so that we're all on the same page regarding ICD-10 moving forward as we go into the solutions and the tools and eventually the smart sheet technology. We all know that all of this was supposed to happen last year, last October 1st, 2014. It was delayed. It was delayed, many of you know, by a, uh, a bill that President Obama signed back last April 1st. It was H.R. 4302. And the main focus of this bill was actually supposed to address the sustainable growth rate patch, the doc fix patch, which unfortunately we're all dealing with once again this year. But wrapped up inside of that SGR patch, and I believe many of the Congress that signed this law did not realize it, there was a one-year delay in ICD-10. 
it is the consensus of all experts that that will not happen again. And this October 1st, 2015, we absolutely will be off and running with ICD-10. It's an absolute must. We're the only industrialized nation that has not transitioned from ICD-9. We simply can't stay there. It gives us a whole new timeline. With the practices that I engaged with last year, it was very obvious that most physicians were woefully behind in their preparation for this change. So it does give us a whole new timeline and a strategy that we can start to develop to make sure that we have everything buttoned up ready for October 1st. To clarify some common confusion that I often hear, I want to review again what this ICD-10 rule is all about. It is strictly focusing on the medical diagnosis side of a patient's invoice when it relates to outpatient procedures. It does not involve CPT coding. I often get asked frequently, well, John, will the modifiers that we use change that go on our claims? And the answer, of course, is no. Modifiers are linked to the CPT. That's not going to change. Only ICD-10 uh, affects the diagnosis coding that we are using as outpatient physicians. I'm sure many of you have seen some of the differences between ICD-9 and ICD-10. Again, just to review, ICD-9 are mostly numeric characters. There are some exceptions, but they are mostly numeric. They generally are three to five characters in length. And depending upon how you look at these codes in terms of their numbers, there's approximately 13,000 of those codes. ICD-10, however, brings a world of alphanumeric characters, three to up to seven characters in length, and in excess of 160,000 codes. So it really makes the coding much more complex, and it's the code specificity that really unlocks the challenge of getting that claim properly paid. We have to search for that most specific code. Now, as a consultant, how generally can we mitigate that search? Well, we can certainly use the most primitive form of search, in my opinion, which are books. I certainly don't recommend the books. You will see that the books are made up of 21 chapters, and I want you to think about the human capital that would be necessary, the time that it would be necessary, the workflow disruption that would be necessary to search through the books to get the most specific code. Then we have tools, and you'll begin to understand the difference between tools and solutions, but tools are certainly better than books. They bring about some electronic means of searching. An example of a tool that I'll talk about tonight are the general equivalence mapping programs that are available, the GEMS program. However, one of the things that the tools fall short on is addressing the workflow disruption that we're also going to be facing. And once again, only the solutions bring about the most specific code and address the workflow compromise that ICD-10 will be bringing forth. I'm not going to bore you with the chapters of the books, but suffice it to say that broken down by organ systems, there are 21 chapters that in the world of searching through books, somebody would have to search for, generally taking on the average, I think it came out to about 20 minutes per code, think about the human capital and the expansive resources that would be necessary to invest using books. I simply think that's out of the question. These codes get so specific that you have probably all seen the very humorous anecdotes that are out there uh, regarding the specificity and, the re and regarding the codes that are true codes that are out there, such as V97.2, getting sucked into a jet engine without causing damage to the airplane. Well, how anybody would ever have this type of traumatic event happen to them and show up in an outpatient facility, I'm not quite sure. But this is an actual code. Now, 
the humor gets even deeper if we look at the fact that this code is four characters in length, but if this was a luggage car driver that was sucked into the jet without causing damage, it actually expands by one character. And if this was a male luggage car driver, one more character. Under five feet five in height, yet another character. Slightly bald, yet another. And wearing a short sleeve shirt, yet another. So I think in a very humorous way, we all understand how specific these codes can get. And mind you, in the world of pre and post payment audits, our documentation must also match the, specif the specificity level of which we're coding. In the world of pre and post payment audits, we can be faced with just as bad of a cash flow crisis as not finding the most specific code if we don't document correctly. So I wanted to make sure I point that out as well. Some of the other differences that I'm sure you're all aware of, um, laterality for those specialties who deal with laterality right and left side, that affects the coding level of ICD-10. And injuries are generally grouped by anatomical site. And injuries often present us with yet another hurdle that we need to circumvent, which is this unique seventh character. Here, for example, a fracture code requires a seventh character that's going to indicate whether this is an initial visit, a subsequent visit, how the fracture is healing. Is it delayed? Is it a non-union, a malunion? And whether this is an open or closed fracture. So these, seven ca these seventh characters not only are going to expand the human capital that are necessary to do the searching, but they will also trip us up in getting claim denials. And we simply have to focus on getting that most specific code in the most, effe in the most efficient manner to get this claim paid. Let's talk a little bit about the tools. We'll move away from the books and we'll talk about the general equivalence mapping programs. There are many of these programs out there. Some of them are actually even free. And what they allow is simply a conversion from ICD-9 to ICD-10. But you'll notice that except for those codes where there's an exact match, there are many which are only approximate matches. And then there are some where there's absolutely no match. So I use this analogy all the time about a GEMS mapping program, or any tool for that matter. These tools definitely help get you to the neighborhood that you need to be in, but they often fail to get you to the street of that neighborhood that you need to be in, and most definitely often fail to get you to the exact address, the house that you need to be in to get this claim paid. So there are some flaws within GEMS mapping programs, and certainly they still have not addressed the workflow disruptions that the solutions, such as the Smartsheet 10 technology, definitely has mitigated. And you've heard me use the term workflow quite a bit already in this webinar. I am a, I'm very focused on workflow as an efficiency consultant to practices. We have all been through a few years now of meaningful use, PQRS. If you think that those entities have disrupted your workflow, those are merely speed bumps compared to the potential of what ICD-10 can do to our practice. You know, if you fail to comply with meaningful use or PQRS, well, there are penalties. And yeah, those penalties might hurt a little bit. But if you fail to comply in an efficient and effective manner with ICD-10, you literally have hit a brick wall. This is something that can literally shut your lights off and shut you down because your cash flow is going to be dependent upon it. So as hard as we focused on meaningful use and PQRS, we need to multiply that by a, a, a big factor in focusing on ICD-10. We have to focus on ICD-10 simply because we need to get paid. We need to stop 
claim denials from occurring as much as we can. Not all of those claim denials, frankly, are going to be within our control, but we need to control those that we can by getting the most specific code in a most efficient manner. So why are claim rejections truly problematic? Well, if you believe this statistic, which I certainly do, it's a documented statistic, that the longer it takes a claim to be paid, the more likely it is that it will never be paid. If you believe in that statistic, then getting the claims right the first time is extremely important. So now let's talk about solutions. And again, solutions are focusing on, on code specificity without disruption of workflow. I often use this story when I talk about the transition to ICD-10 by relating it to one of my favorite television programs known as The Prophet. Uh, many people have never heard of this this television series, The Prophet, but yet if I ask if they've heard of Shark Tank, many people have heard of Shark Tank. On the same channel, and I believe it actually follows Shark Tank, is a very, very educational program relative to Shark Tank by the name of The Prophet. And it is hosted by the CEO of Camping World. His name is Marcus Limonis. Marcus Limonis is actually a venture capitalist. The people in this reality show, the, the, the companies in this reality show, reach out to him for, for a chance of him trying to save their floundering business. And he naturally gets equity to do that. So he focuses on three principles on every show. There's usually one of three things wrong, principally, within a floundering business. It's either people, process, or product. People, process, or product. When we look at implementation of ICD-10, I could assure you the challenge is not going to be people. The challenge is not going to be product. It's going to be a process problem. We have to have a firm, efficient process in place so that the conversion does not cost us extraordinary amounts of money. And that's, again, where the smart sheet technology come in. We can't allow what we did for meaningful use in PQRS to dictate how we transition to ICD-10. So let's jump into the smart sheet technology. I'm going to show you how the technology works. Again, I will copy and paste questions that might come in. We'll get an FAQ document out there. Um, but certainly, I think you're going to get a very good high-level understanding of the difference between this technology and perhaps others that you have seen out there. It is not only very simple to learn, simply watching a 10-minute video is going to allow you to begin immediately to use this very intuitive, very color-coded, step-by-step program. And the beauty of it is it's EHR agnostic. So it can literally be integrated into any electronic health record so that as you're clicking and find the most specific code, it will actually populate. And in fact, it will actually dual dual code, and you'll see the meaning of that in just a second for those of you not familiar with dual coding, your practice management invoice, your electronic super bill. It will actually work that way if it's integrated into your electronic health record. So what you're looking at here is the database of the smart sheet technology. And let's start off on the left-hand side of the screen here. And again, as I mentioned, but by trade I'm a podiatrist, so I'm going to start off this demonstration using the podiatry slant, if you will. But I'll show you other specialties as well. If I knew the ICD-9 code of a bunion, 735.0, and I typed it into the left-hand side of the screen, what you would see happen on the right-hand side of your screen is that it would take you to the exact chapter of the CMS GEMS programs, the exact chapter, and it would be in black 
M20.1 hallux valgus, which is essentially what a bunion is. But because it's black, I know that I need to click further until I find a green code. Only once I find a green code do I click on that. Now notice unspecified is actually green, indicating that there are some carriers that would actually accept that code. But I know better than that. I want to choose laterality here, so I'm going to choose the M20.11 hallux valgus right foot. And you can see what it did is it up on top populated that M20.11 code for me. If this was integrated into my electronic health record, it would integrate that code right into the practice management or the super bill for this particular patient. So it's color coded. I know that I have to search for that green code. Now certainly that's not all that it does. That's fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Let's take another podiatric code and suppose I had a patient with a sprained ankle and I knew the code 845.0 and I went and typed that into my ICD-9 search. On the left hand side, or excuse me, on the right hand side of the screen, once again you see that it took me to the exact chapter, the black heading, of sprain of unspecified ligament of ankle, S93.40. I know I have to click again to find the green code, but when I go to choose my laterality this time, when I click on that green code of right ankle, it automatically alerts me through a pop-up that this is one of those codes that require a unique seventh character and I'm asked to basically select whether this is an initial, a subsequent, or a sequela, a complication that led to the ankle sprain. Once I click that, it then populates that seventh unique character and it's ready to be populated into my EHR, uh, into my EHR system and this claim is ready to be submitted properly and most specifically. Here I'm showing that if I didn't know the code in the ICD-9 search, I can certainly search by words, fractured metatarsal. As soon as I start typing in this word, it's going to immediately take me to the chapter that I'm looking for, again, fracture of metatarsal bone. I continue to click until I find a green code, but when I go to click the laterality again, this is a fracture code and it's alerting me to the fact that I need a unique seventh character. Is this a closed fracture, an open fracture? Is it routinely healing or delayed in healing? I'm forced to select one of those choices so that I get the most specific green code with the unique seventh character populated. It is literally fail-proof. Uh, you, you really have to know absolutely nothing about ICD-10 to utilize this and come up with the most specific codes. Now that's still not all that this does. One of the patent pending entities of Smartsheet is what I consider to be the crown jewel because so far all we have talked about, all we have addressed is code specificity. We haven't yet talked about how is this going to allow our current workflow to continue to be utilized. Well, that takes place by the utilization of what we call a smart super bill. The smart sheet allows you to by provider, set up a custom super bill. How do most providers right now start their workflow of their revenue cycle? It's normally started with a super bill, either electronic, hopefully, some are still using paper, but it starts with a super bill. Now, in the world of ICD-9, a super bill could be one page based on your specialty. In the world of ICD-10, that one page would translate into 20 pages. So ICD-10 would potentially destroy 
the normal workflow and behaviors of how providers start their revenue cycle, Smartsheet brings that back for us. Literally within 20 seconds, we can create a provider specific. This is something that is done by the provider within 20 seconds. I've chosen only six diagnoses here. You could choose as many as you want, but on the right hand side of your screen, you see my smart super bill. So now suppose I had a patient who came in with dermatophytosis of the foot. By the way, that's athlete's foot. You can see immediately on my screen here of my smart super bill that this is green all the way across, which tells me there's a one-to-one -one match between ICD-9 and ICD-10. There's a one-to-one -one match. So that's easy. All I have to do is click on my super bill for this patient and over here, this could be your electronic health record, you see that it is dual coding. It's not only populating the ICD-10 code, but it's also populating the ICD-9 code. Now, why is dual coding important? As you know, ICD-10 goes by date of service. So if I have a patient who I had seen prior to October 1st, but I am perhaps resubmitting this or just getting around to submitting it, I need to use the ICD-9 code even though I am after October 1st. Furthermore, not every insurance carrier is going to be ready to transition on October 1st. So our systems have to be prepared to dual code so that we could simply write rules into the system that state if it's a date of service prior to October 1st, send the ICD-9 code. If it's an insurance carrier that we know hasn't transitioned even though we're past October 1st, send the ICD-9 code. So it makes the process once again fail proof uh, by dual coding. Now suppose I didn't have a one-to-one -one match. Let's take, for example, this patient has, once again, hallux valgus. And this is showing up on my smart super bill because it's one of the more common diagnoses that I, that I use. In this instance, when I go to click on the ICD-9 code here, it automatically takes me right to the database of Smartsheet where you saw before and I simply click until I get that green code. And here again, you see that it is duly populating the ICD-9 and ICD-10 code. So my smart super bill basically gives me the opportunity to start my revenue cycle exactly like I always have, by super bill. And I simply click, and it takes me right to the necessary chapters within the, the Smartsheet database, just like you saw before. Let's go over some other specialties. I'll, I'll drift away a little bit from podiatry here just to see that this is specialty agnostic, obviously, because it incorporates every ICD-10 code and ICD-9 code. Um, it is updated regularly as Medicare updates the codes. This automatically updates our system as well. But suppose I was a general surgeon. On the left-hand side here, you see my custom, my provider custom smart super bill. And let's suppose this patient had abdominal pain. Again, I see that it is not green, so it's not a one-to-one -one match. When I click on my ICD-9 code, it automatically takes me on the right-hand side of the screen to the exact chapter, and it tells me that in order for this to be the most specific code, I need to choose what quadrant it's in, in the abdomen. Is it an upper quadrant, lower quadrant? Is it right upper, left upper? I need to click on that in order to change this red code to green up on top. I just keep clicking until it turns green. The other thing I want to point out on this particular screen are these excludes notes and inclusion terms. 
The Smartsheet technology is not only a conversion tool, but it's an entire resource library for you. As you click on these codes, you might choose to just click and have your invoice populated and be done with it, but you might want other information, and it's all right there in your fingertips. What excludes are, you just simply click and those windows open up and educate you further if you need to be educated about those particular codes. It's that simple. And you see here, it went and I, as soon as I clicked right upper quadrant pane, it populated it, it turned from red to green up on top there. If I were a pain management doctor, again, using my smart sheet on the left-hand side of the, my customized smart super bill on the left-hand side of my screen, if I clicked on re reflex sympathetic dystrophy in the world of ICD-9, it automatically takes me to complex regional pain syndrome of upper limb, and I simply click because it's telling me I have to define the laterality, whether it's upper or lower, and I keep clicking until it turns green, and you'll no longer see the red on top. Now I'm at the most specific code there is. If I was a hematologist, once again, using my smart super bill on the left-hand side, and I had a patient with pernicious anemia, I would click on it since it's not green all the way across. It's not a one-to-one -one match. I click on it, it takes me right to the chapter, and I have to click until I identify the root cause of that pernicious anemia. In fact, this patient may have had an intrinsic factor deficiency. When I get to that level of specificity, everything turns green, and I know I'm at the most specific code. If I was an obstetrician, last example, and I had a patient with with placenta privia. Again, using my smart super bill, I click and it takes me right to the chapter of, on placenta privia, but it tells me I have to keep clicking because as an, op, as, a, as an obstetrician, I have to note the trimester that the patient is in, and I keep clicking until I find that green code and it populates it right up on top for me. So that's a very high level look at how the smart sheet works. And one of the other things that I would like to point out is that there is also available to you an ICD-10 roadmap. Again, very customized for a practice. Big and small practices can utilize this. And it basically utilizes your data to, to write out a very comprehensive plan, including your employees, including timelines of events that need to take place so that we don't get behind the eight ball. Having the smart sheet technology is absolutely going to help those two hurdles of workflow disruption and code specificity, but there are other things that we need to do and check off our task list to make sure we're ready for October 1st. The custom roadmap basically spells all of that out for, for you. So you may be interested in that as well. Um, so please keep, keep that in mind. Um, there are some questions about showing some specific examples um, using certain diagnoses because I don't have a live database in front of me and this is all done just through PowerPoint. I can't do that, but certainly, once again, go to the Trizetto website um, and I'm going to right now give everybody my email address. You can certainly email me. We're happy to demonstrate on a live database specific codes that you may want uh, you may want to see in use. Um, so my email address is John J O H N at Nemo, that's N E M O C P as in Charlie Paul dot com. John at NemoCP.com. Happy to answer any residual questions. There is another question I do want to address, and I, I, I definitely should talk about this because it was asked on the prior webinar. What's the meaning of a sequela? 
Um, a sequela basically means a result of, um, so there are diagnoses that are secondary to something else, and that's part of the specificity of the code. Um, so again, that comes into play in that unique seventh character, which often can trip us up and, and wind up getting claims denied if we didn't have the smart sheet technology. So once again, let me close by uh, thanking everybody for attending, reminding you that this has been recorded and we will reach out to each and every one of you instructing you where to access the recording. And lastly, we'll reach out to everybody to instruct you how to get your free trial version of, of Smartsheet 10. We want everybody trying this. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy playing around with it even now as an educational tool um, to see how it works. But come October 1st, I think you're going to see the extraordinary value that it provides you in making sure you get your claims paid very timely. So again, thank you very much, everyone, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks for attending tonight's webinar.